So in today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to write text with a cloud effect. Uh, first, I'm going to go to my front viewport here, and I'm going to use the freehand tool. And I'm just going to write VFX, something like this. It's quite difficult to join the letters. Um, then VFX, and then tail off. So something like that. And um, I'm going to create two materials. So I'm just going to delete all these in my material manager. And I'm going to create a pyro cluster material, which is like a little cloud effect, and pyro cluster volume tracer. This is very important. And uh, for this uh, pyro cluster cloud texture to render, we basically have to apply this pyro cluster volume effect to an environment object like this. So I'm just going to drag that over here. So this is basically something that's just necessary to render this material. And um, I'm just going to go back to my scene. So um, usually pyro cluster materials are added to particles. So I've got this particle system here. And if I just apply this to the emitter like that, hit render, we can see that it's rendering a little cloud trail. So that's good. But uh, it's very difficult to get this emitter to kind of follow this spline. So uh, it would be much easier just to use the matrix object. But unfortunately, the matrix object isn't, isn't a particle system. So, uh, but there is a way around this. So I'm just going to delete this emitter and I'm going to go to my matrix object and generate thinking particles. And I'm just going to add my material to the matrix like this. And I'm just going to hit render. We can see some particles are created with the matrix here. So I'm just going to hit render and nothing happens. We basically need to create a particle geometry, this here, and then apply the material to that. I'm just going to hit render. So now we're actually uh, rendering the thinking particles inside of the, attached to the matrix, which is great. So this kind of gives us all kinds of possibilities. Basically, using the matrix, we can add deformers and we can do all kinds of cool stuff, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to go back to my matrix and go to object mode like this, and then drag and drop the spline into the object field here, and now the matrix is mapped to the spline, which is basically what we want. And I'm just going to increase the count, so now we're populating that spline with. Uh, lots of particles and I'm just going to choose even distribution here and I'm just going to render this so that's great that's what we're looking for basically and uh, as you can see the material is a bit kind of strong so if we just go to this material here we can uh, affect the radius I think the radius is okay but you can adjust it here and globals uh, we can adjust the density so I'm just going to reduce the density to 5 that should make it a bit lighter. Uh, maybe less. It's getting a bit fluffier around the edges. Looks good there. Okay. So the last step is basically uh, we want to animate this on. So because we're using a matrix, we can use effectors, which is great. So I'm going to use a plane effector. And I'm just going to uncheck position, go to fall off and choose linear like that. Just go to the top viewport and rotate that linear gizmo. So as you know, so I'm just going to turn scale on here and I'm going to check uniform scale and choose minus one. And as you know, with the plane effector, if you set the scale to minus one, it basically uh, kind of makes objects invisible, cloners invisible. So if I render this now, since the uh, plane effector is right in the middle here, this uh, half should be visible and this half should be invisible. So I'm just going to check that. But uh, as you can see, unfortunately, 
uh, nothing's happening. The effector doesn't seem to have any um, bearing on the size of the particles. But uh, there is a way to work around this, fortunately. If we just go back to the material and go to, um, where is it, shape, you want to check use particle TM. This is very important. Once you check this, the effector will start working. Also, we can check preview. And now we can actually see um, the pyro cluster kind of balls. So these balls are basically an accurate uh, representation of what we will see. So I'm just going to play that back. And now, as you can see, the plane effector is uh, active. If I just play that back. So if I just render this. So that's great. You can already see it's working. So the next step is basically just to uh, add some animation onto this effector. Add a keyframe here and put it here, add a keyframe there. I'm just going to set it to linear like this. And it's the wrong way around, so you can just go to plane, fall off, invert. And um, I'm just doing this quickly, but if you really want to be specific, you can use like a spherical fall off and then really uh, animate that kind of carefully around the text. But uh, for now, I'm just going to use linear just to quickly show you the concepts. And you'll notice that the kind of uh, this material seems to be scaling on its own and we don't want this. We just want to control our own effects. So I'm just going to go back to this material. If we go to the age tab where it says use age effects, just uncheck this and then that way we're just going to have a nice constant animation which we can control with effectors rather than using this kind of uh, random thing here. So if we want these to kind of slowly scale, we can add a time effector to the matrix. Just add a time effector, just check it's gone in the matrix, yep. And uh, set a small amount of rotation maybe, small amount of position. And now, it's very slow. Ah, we've got a problem. Um, if you go to the matrix, now this is very important. Make sure you check particle priority. Set that to after effectors. And now we're getting the effect we're looking for. So yeah, this is very important because we basically want to uh, do all our effector operations and then attach the particles to that. So um, yeah, very important step. So I'm just going to go back to my time effector and just adjust those values again. Small values should do it. And now we can see a bit of movement, which kind of adds a bit more realism. And those circles are pretty big. So I'm just going to reduce the radius slightly. That's a bit better. And uh, you can add a random effector as well as many effectors as you want, just to kind of break up the clouds a bit. So the random, you might want this before time. And you can control the amount, don't want too much. It's just kind of scatter them a bit more. And that is basically it. You can also keyframe some of the properties like density and radius. So you can start off with a very small density and radius at the beginning and then just gradually increase it. But um, as usual, I'm just going to show you the basic concepts and I'll leave you to kind of uh, tweak the finer details. Yeah, so that is my very simple and quick cloud tutorial and uh, thanks for watching.